Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic Up. Everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because today we are going over what to never, ever, never, never, never do to your mower. look and sound a little crazy today and that's because it's been a hell of a few weeks <laughs> and let me show you a peek of what's been going on at the shop <sighs> don't wait till the last minute guys three weeks out on repairs. Well, it's because everybody waits till the last minute to check them. And here we are. So yeah, needless to say, I've been a little busy, okay? <laughs> We've been helping tons of customers, have had tons of equipment come in, and I had a customer bring their riding lawnmower in that we got to, and I just gotta tell you guys, this thing has turned out to be a debacle, and I have a customer that is very mad at me right now, and I gotta smooth it all over, but it has a story with it, and I thought y'all would like to hear about it and know what to never do to your riding lawnmower. And hopefully, it'll save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash the subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. All right, so a little bit of a story time so I can tell you how I got to this point of telling you what not to do to your riding lawnmower. I had a customer come in this week with a 2005 18-year-old Murray riding lawnmower. And when they're this old, we always go out, give them a once over, make sure that it's not something detrimental because we don't want you to put much money into a tractor that old and we don't want to waste your time or our time. The customer said that it had a flat on the front left of the mower and that also the belts were jumping off. So we go out and check and we could see that the bracket that moves the idler pulley that engages the blades was stuck. So we thought it would be a simple fix. We go to unload it off the trailer and they say, oh, by the way, it won't start either. It was running yesterday, but for some reason it won't start today. Okay, well, probably something simple. Maybe the battery's dead. We don't know. We roll it off, we put it in the yard and we don't see it for another week. When we get to it, we find out that the gas tank is full of water, which customers do this all the time. They might have a gas can sitting around that they don't think about. You know, gasoline sucks the water right out of the air. They might get a bad batch from the gas station. You never know. So the first thing we're going to do before we do any deck work, we got to go through the carburetor and get it running again because we're not going to want to do deck work on a machine that might not run. So we clean all the water out of the tank. We clean the carburetor. We get it running. Next, we move to the deck. We find that one of the spindle pulleys is bent. So we change the $17 pulley out. And then we find out that from the bracket not being able to move like it should, that the PTO cable that engages that bracket, it was stretched out. So now the customer needs a $45 cable. And these things keep racking up, but I'm just like, we're this close to getting this mower back to the customer. So I don't stop and I don't call because although, you know, there was unforeseen things and, and we're got this much money into the tractor. Okay. It's only a few bucks more to get the person mowing. So we got the mower running again. We got the pulley fixed. We got the PTO cable fixed. We got the bracket moving like it should. And we go to engage it and it's making sort of a bad sound. And we go and check under the deck and the blades are bent. So that's another $40 in blades. And I'm just thinking, oh, it's like the money pit movie where, you know, you fix one thing and the next thing breaks with Tom Hanks. You seen it? Yeah, I love it too. So we finally, I finally think that, you know, you know, there's nothing else that could possibly be wrong. We're going to tube this person's tire and we're going to be good to go. So I think, goodness, we're finally almost done, but all we have left is to tube a tire. But then we notice, you know, the front right tire, it's sort of low too now. Well, I guess we'll just tube both tires. So we take the tires off and we go to tube them. And you just thought everything was a debacle up until now, but this is where it starts. This is where it all went downhill. So we remove the customer's tires to put tubes in them to find out that the customer decided to put Fix-A-Flat in their front tires as a fix. Well, to 
Fix-A-Flat is not a fix. Do not ever, 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 ever use Fix-A-Flat on your lawn mower. Now, if you are stranded on the side of the road, keep a can of Fix-A-Flat in there. You know that, you know, it's gonna get you to where you need to go to get your tire replaced. That is one thing. On a rider though, a front tire tube is $10.99, labor is $10, it's 21 bucks. If you put Fix-A-Flat in it, I'm not cleaning that stuff out. That stuff is like a sticky, sappy, nasty, curdled milk smelling gross, ugh. Please do not do it to your mower. Let me show you what it does to the inside of a tire. This is the inside of his tire and that is Fix-A-Flat. And that does not come out. Mm -mm, you can't clean that out. No, no, that's not coming out. I mean, let me see if I can get in here and show you how hard this stuff. There's a chunk. I just had to rip it off. It's gross. Look at that. Nasty, sticky. Ugh. And here's the rim and all of this brown stuff that you see is this sticky like gum like stuff that you cannot clean off. I mean, carburetor cleaner doesn't take it off at all. Ugh, it's gross. It's just sticky, nasty, ugh. It's like hard, moist gum sap goo. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it's terrible inside these tires. So, we're gonna go ahead and try a tube in it because I cannot call the customer now and tell them I just put $250 worth of stuff into your mower and you need two brand new tires because I don't have any used ones at $35 a piece. So that's $70 in tires. Rims, I mean, I, I don't even know if I can get this stuff off the rim. The rims are gonna be like $50 a piece. I can't call this customer and tell them they gotta pay $120 for their front tires on their 18 year old Murray lawnmower. So we have no choice. We have to try to tube it. We put tubes in it. It sits for a few days. We make sure that it's going to hold air. We call the customer, tell them that their rider's ready, and they send somebody to come pick it up. When that person shows up, of course, a few days later, the front left tire is flat again. So we rush to put another tube in it while the person's waiting to pick it up. We have to peel it out of the tire and cut it into pieces just to get it out, put another tube in there, hope that it holds and we send them on their way. I get a call about 30 minutes later telling me that the front right tire is now flat and he is mad. So it is back at the shop right now, sitting with two uh, barely used brand new for it tires that came off my riding lawn mower just so I can make them happy because I didn't have any other ones. And I have this one here to show you what not to do to your riding lawn mower because now I have made the executive decision and I don't know, maybe I'm the last of the rodeo and all the other shops don't do this already. I will never try to tube a tire that has fix a flat in it and they probably won't either. So guys, do not put fix a flat inside of your tires unless you plan on buying new tires and new rims because this stuff doesn't come off. So guys, thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video will save you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me on Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys, and have a great day.